from trailers, it does look quite sandy. It is quite sandy. It's sort of like Tatooine of Star Wars. If I had to describe it as a kind of punk, I would say like it's sand punk. Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun and my favourite thing in. This is where I, Colin Mahern, chat to an RPS staffer about a spang new video game they've been playing and I get them to tell me about their favourite thing in it. Today I'm talking to Deputy Editor Alice Bell about an open world exploration game that's been popping up on most anticipated lists for years. Sable. Alice has been playing it for review so I wanted to get her on to chat to her about her thoughts on the game and specifically the one aspect of Sable that she enjoys more than anything else. So Alice, what is your favourite thing in Sable? My favourite thing in Sable is probably the art style, the look of the thing. But it was close, I think the story and the writing is really good as well. Okay, well what is it about the art specifically that you enjoy? I know even leading up to release it was the one thing that people were really latching on to, but now you've played the game, it never loses its luster I'm guessing. It's inspired by a lot of different things, you know, French and European comedy comics and illustrations and animation and especially this French artist called Mobius who's got this very illustrative style and drew a lot of weird sort of desert scapes it's got a similar colour palette as well and Sable is you play Sable Sable is you and Sable is part of a slightly post-apocalyptic desert nomad culture where you go out on something called your gliding when you reach sort of adolescence and you go out into the world and you explore and you find different people and the different jobs there are in the world and by doing tasks for them you collect badges little tokens and then you can have a mask made for that job so if you help out the mechanists the mechanics then you can become a mechanist and that's what you are forever like at the end of your gliding you decide this is the mask I'm going to wear for the rest of my life I will always be a climber or a scrapper or a guard so you spend a lot of time exploring this huge desert scape and first of all it's a very delicate almost wireframe style to it sort of like a very fine line pen drawing that has sketched the edges of everything which is very delicate and nice and people and sable move in almost a slightly stop motion way almost like it's like the animations for people have dropped a couple of frames and it's really nice in context and the other thing is that it's on a day and night cycle which is constantly moving so you get a constant kind of change of colors as the sun moves and then the the sun sets and the moon rises and it's night and everything becomes kind of this inky bluey color which is very nice and then you get to see the sun come up again and everything becomes pinky and orange and then yellow. It's really nice. From trailers, it does look quite sandy. It looks quite barren. Uh, is there variation there in this world? Uh, yes and no. It is quite sandy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a desert world. It's sort of like Tatooine of Star Wars. If I had to describe it as a kind of punk, I would say like it's sand punk. I will say that you have your little glider, which is like a sort of floating desert motorbike that has little wings and you can strafe and stuff. That isn't as smooth as it looks in trailers. It's not like, you know, in Journey where you feel like you're this elegant sand surfer. Mm. It can get a little bit boring if you're just chuntering along to somewhere the other side of the map. But there is fast travel as well. It is mostly a desert, but the different areas have quite a different feel to them and they have a subtly different colour palette. Uh, and when when you cross from one to the other it's quite fun because suddenly everything might be a bit slightly greener maybe like a little greener tinge to everything and they also have different geographical features so there's one that has steamy hot water vents and also lightning and crystals with fireflies around them another has sort of like a, a ship graveyard lots of junky scrapped ships i came upon this place like i was driving directly into the moonrise the moon kind of rose behind all these jagged bits of metal that looked really cool there's another place that has a lot of giant skeletons that kind of look like dragons and there's a camp in almost every area where you can go and sort of trade and and find work and the camp in that area is inside like a giant rib 
rogue cage. It's pretty cool. It's variations within a theme, and I think it does that pretty well as well. You mentioned that the story and the writing was nearly your your favourite thing. Do tell me more, because I don't know, I wouldn't have thought that Sable would have been replete with dialogue and clever quips from characters, but they do get chatty. A, a little bit. It doesn't have loads, but it does this really interesting thing where when you're talking to someone in the conversation, you will have the dialogue, but then you'll also get snippets of Sable's internal thoughts about the issue. You know, she might say like, well, I could have uh, told him about my political opinions, but I decided to keep quiet. So you get little snippets of like how Sable feels about someone she meets. There are cartographers whose job is to sort of map the desert area. And you the first thing you kind of do when you get to a new area is you look for their balloon on the horizon, which is usually quite high up. And then you climb it to meet them. You can buy a map of the area and also ask them if there's anything interesting nearby. And one of them was really like grumpy. It was like, why did you come all the way up here? Don't you think there'd be a reason for me being up here by myself that I didn't want interruptions? And Sable's sort of like, I don't reply that I assume it's because he's the cartographer, you know. <laughs> so she's a little bit smart and internally a bit snarky. And I like seeing like her as a character because it'd be quite easy for Sable to be just a kind of faceless blank slate for you to put a mask on but she's not and I like the way that's drawn out here and there it's nice but still overall it is the look of the thing that's kind of really grabbed you yeah the day night cycle especially keeps it fresh I do sometimes wish the day cycle was longer so you get more of those colours but it's so lovely like being somewhere at night and then having the sun come up and you see it completely transformed in gradual layers as well it starts getting a bit brighter and you start seeing a hint of some of the colours and then eventually it's fully risen the sun's fully risen you can see the full palette of the landscape around you and it's really nice Thanks very much for chatting with me today, Alice. And if you, dear viewer, would like to check out Alice's full thoughts on Sable, then be sure to have a read of her written review on the website. Thanks very much for watching, you absolute star. We hope to see you again soon as we learn more about people's favourite things in video games. But before you go, do remember, for all of your PC gaming needs, keep it on rockpapershotgun.com.